comparison between you know Hollywood and the industry here how how far off do you think we are and what are the the biggest impediments and challenges that you that you think we still need to overcome here in the space I think that um people here because you have the stories yeah right you have you have the voice because mm. I, I think it's a, a similar problem that in the states for yeah. minorities in the states mm. right where you don't have access mm. you know what I mean yeah. to certain things yeah. so you don't know necessarily like you guys just skip the development process that's so true all together yeah. development is very important, very important. to yeah. it's create. the foundation of yeah. your house yeah. yeah and so then when you have a script and you're like no it doesn't need develop all, everything needs to develop every yeah. script needs a development yeah. process right mm -hmm. Welcome to the Film Biz Show, where we talk about the business of film and television, both locally and internationally. Now, as you know, this month is Women's Month, and we are commemorating strong black women that are in the film and television industry. And today we are interviewing one such woman. She calls herself a creative writer producer, but she's more than that. She's worked in the US film industry for companies such as Disney, Netflix, Fox, Adult Swim, and honestly, that's just naming a few. She's an author of 40 Hours and an Unwritten Rule, and has established her own publishing house named Butterfly Inc. Publishing that her novel was published under. And now she lives in South Africa, training African filmmakers so they can produce their own amazing content. Bakhaitu, please, let's have a warm welcome for Miss Kim Williams. Thanks for having hey, me. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. If you can just give us a very brief background of who you are um, and your upbringing, um, please. Yeah. Um, as you said, I, I consider myself a creative black woman. Um, I grew up in the south of um, of the U.S., Texas. Okay. <laughs> um, We've heard a lot about them. Yes, oh, heard okay. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, I, at age eight, I saw a play mm. on like PBS, which is like the public broadcasting um, free mm. um, TV, and seeing that play was pearly. Mm -hmm. And for, at that moment, I knew I wanted to be a writer. Oh wow! And I never, I never wanted to do anything else. Oh, and yeah. so, um, after I graduated, um, I went to film school in Texas, and mm -hmm. I knew that I had to either go to LA, mm -hmm. Los Angeles, or New York. Um, and so, I moved to to Los Angeles because I had family in Los Angeles. I was originally born in Los Angeles, but when my parents divorced, we moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. um, at, at, actually, at age eight. Wow. Sure. <laughs> um, okay. And so, yeah. And so I went out to L.A. and got in the business. Mm -hmm. And kind of, I started in production and in post-production. Then switched over to TV development. Did a stint in TV development. Wrote the book while I was in TV development. And I um, decided to go back to production because I figured it would give me more freedom to write. Mm. Um, so then went back to production, but still didn't write. Yeah. More freedom to write in your own space. <laughs> in my own space. Because, mm. you know, um, working in development is really kind of a corporate job. It's a not, you know, like, well, not nine to five, but yeah. it's a, you go to work every day. You know, you yeah. take so it's a it's a corporate gig. Mm. So I wanted more freedom to write. And once I had done my book, the first published the first book, I was doing like book tours. Mm. So I was traveling. So I just needed just more freedom. Mm. So I went back to production. Mm. Did not write because production you're yeah. still busy, right? The clock. And lucky for me, I was working i was freelance but i was working constantly okay in 2009 mm. um i got laid off from a job mm. and when i got laid off from that job 
um, the day that I got laid off, a friend of mine who I worked with in development um, at the company, she was put, she was, she wanted me to publish her book. And so um, she just called me like the same day that I got laid off. And she said, oh, I, I think that I want to do a play. I want to turn the book into a play. Mm. I was like, funny that you say that because my first love is theater. Hey. <laughs> so we wrote a play. Um, and then I wrote another book. And I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. I want to get into writing. Mm. And so I just, you know, focused on writing. In 2012, I formed my own production company, Inkspot Entertainment. Mm. And just started creating content mm. um, for, for, I started out creating content for YouTube. Mm. Um, and I, I was one of the early black scripted YouTubers. Mm. So there was not a saturated market. Yeah. So like the web series kind of blew up mm. and I had a lot of press. Mm. Um, and so because we saw your numbers that i mean you don't get those these days you like don't you don't get four those. million in a month yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You don't, mm. yeah so it it was that time it was only a few i think it was me um black and sexy mm. Issa ray mm. awkward black yeah. girl mm. uh, matthew cherry had a web series it was just a handful of us mm. doing web series and at that time we were doing um like episodic you know once a month oh, because wow. we were all funding it ourselves mm, you know mm. um no one was helping mm. us do it mm. so um but yeah but then that led me into you know other avenues yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean just like Issa Rae, where you're able to you know use that experience from the youtube um web series into mm -hmm. something um, that you know the the channels would be able to buy. Yeah, so I I ended up licensing mm -hmm. three of my web series sure. to different um, different companies. Okay, I licensed um, three of them here mm -hmm. on the continent here in Joburg, oh, and fantastic. you know for different markets across Africa. Mm -hmm. And then I also licensed um, two for you know major cable network in the states oh well done man yeah yeah, yeah. so really it, it kind of paid off really great <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you 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 have a very independent kind of outlook mm -hmm. in terms of your creative process mm -hmm. i mean you wrote your book which i really want to get into <laughs> um uh, but um you know you subsequently went and um, registered your own publishing company. Mm -hmm. So from the onset, everything was, was you know, in you know, that way. For me, like when I had the idea, to, I wasn't, I didn't set out to write a book. Yeah. Um, I literally, my, because I hadn't been writing, mm. um, even though I had wanted to be this writer. In my first year of university, you got it, college. Yeah. Um, I had this um, white art history teacher. Yeah tell me that I was a horrible writer. <gasps> and I, thinking back on it now, I was like, she wasn't even a writer. She was an art history teacher. So why, why was she <laughs> hating? Like, <laughs> what did she see? Like, what, what? <laughs> like I had written like a paper. Yeah. And, and I had grown up in a very segregated part of Texas. Yeah. So I did not have any exposure. Like all, everyone I knew mm. were black. And then I, for freshman year, I go to like this all white college mm. so then when the the white history or mm. history teacher tell me like i had gotten my she gave me a c on a paper and that was like my first c i was like oh, <laughs> i'm a writer <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah i get a c on a paper yeah, yeah. and so i went to her because yeah. i was like what's up with yeah. the c you know yeah. <laughs> and she was like you're a horrible writer <laughs> i was like but oh. Kim, wait, we need to clarify something for our local viewers. <laughs> a C is of what, 60% to... A C is like in the like high 70s. Oh, high... <laughs> That's a good mark. <laughs> but for me, I was like, no, I was an A, especially in writing. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, so yeah. I was like, what is... Go and yeah. she was like, you're a horrible writer. And yeah. I remember I went to my dorm that day and I, because I, I even changed my major because mm. I was like, oh... Okay, well, she said yeah, I'm yeah. a horrible writer. Yeah. 
I, I must be a horrible, horrible writer. writer. Oh, man. And so mm. that's why I went into production when I got to L.A. I was like, okay, I will just go into production. Mm. I, I'm not going to write. You it's know? amazing how some of these things, they, they stick, hey? They stick. They really do. They stick. Mm, mm. And then my grandmother passed. I mm. lost my grandmother, and I went on my first, out, I, first trip, solo trip, yeah. and first trip out of the country. Wow. And I, was, I went to Thailand, mm. and I was in Thailand, and it was my first moment of, oh, we're not here forever. Mm. You know, like, I was like, oh, wait, I'm not going to be here forever. And so then I was like, well, what am I mm. doing? Like, mm. like, what is my life? And I, I, was, I was like, what is my passion? Mm. And on that trip, I was like, I remember I used to love writing. Yeah. And so I literally just started writing. And then once I started writing, I was mm. like, oh, this could be a book, you mm. know? And that's how... 40 Hours and an Unwritten Rule came about. Yeah. And I, the thing is, you know, everything is, like, art is subjective, right? It is. Um, but I felt, like, I'm very sensitive mm. about my writing. Mm. So after I finished the book, I sent it to one publisher, mm. and they sent me a rejection. Mm. And I was like... Yeah, I can't. I can't handle yes. rejection. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> so I knew nothing about publishing, yeah. but I spent a year learning about publishing because mm. I was like, I'm not gonna be, you know, this self publisher mm. that. So I was like, no, I need my books in bookstores. Yeah. I need it on Amazon. Yeah. So how do I get it? Mm. I, you know. So I was like, oh, I have to mm. start a publishing. But, but company. what convinced you that the product was ready for the market? Because I... Because you said so. Because I said I so. love the company. <laughs> <laughs> you need no validation from no, outside. I yeah. was like, because I, you know, and mm. the thing was, I, um, so I, oh, you know, started my publishing company. The first week mm. that I released the book, I made my money back. Oh, my goodness. You know, so I was like, mm. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always. But, but the book, 40 Hours and an Unwritten Rule, what is it about? What inspired it? So in, you know, in Hollywood, I was always the only black person in mm. the workplace. Mm. And then coming from Texas, mm. being the only black, I mean, being around all black, yeah. I just started thinking like, because, you know, me and friends used to share stories yeah. about stuff that would happen at work. Mm. And um, so I was like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, just chronicle all the stories and put it in like this diary type mm, of form mm. and i knew that it was a you know since you know like serious topic so i was like okay it has to mm. be funny because that's the way that's the way everyone will open and at the time again i was working in hollywood most of my friends and co-workers mm. were white mm. so i was like okay in order for them to read this book it has to be comedic. It has to be comedic. That's true. And that's the yeah. power of comedy, isn't it? It's, it's, yes. it's, it's how to, to um, you know, make a, um, a very difficult topic more, you know, easier to consume. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. no. And when the book came out, it was interesting because the book did really well because I had black people saying, mm. oh, my gosh, this is me. You're mm. telling my story. Mm. And then I had white people saying... Oh, did I do that? You know, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't know, did mm, that, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I, I did the book, and then I went back um, to work in production. And after I did the book, like, friends, and, you know, when I would go, go out, people would be like, oh, what do you do? Mm. And I'm like, oh, I'm a producer. Mm. And my friends would uh, say, but you wrote a book. <laughs> like you. And I was always, I was like, no, I'm not a writer. I'm not mm. a, because every time you say you're a writer, then the next question, oh, what, what do have you, you write? Written? <laughs> and so I was like, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a writer. Mm. I'm a producer, yeah. you know? Um, but then, so fast forward, that was in 2004 mm. that I released the book. And then fast forward 2009, I got laid off for the first time mm. ever, you know. Um, and so I did the play, and then I wrote another book, 
Mm. And then, because um, I had just bought a house mm. in like 2009. And I needed to pay my mortgage. Yeah. And so I, ha- I still had a few boxes of books, mm. you know, in my garage. So I was like, how can I sell these books, mm. you know? So then um, I saw Awkward Black Girl. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you too. And mm. I, I, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, if I do a web series... It can be a commercial for the book. Mm. You know what I mean? So I literally got the book and went through and because it was like I just turned each chapter into into an episode, an episode, like literally word for word. Right. And so at the end, I had 12 episodes. Sure. And um, I was like, okay, now I need to shoot this. Mm. So um, I, you know, after working in production and being in L.A., I knew people. Mm. And so I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, can we do it? Can we shoot it? Mm. And everyone came, worked totally for free. For free? For free. Didn't pay. People gave me location. Like an old person yeah. that I, I had worked with gave me the location. Mm. Then the actors I had, you know. Yeah. Were, were but were these actors experienced? Because I know yeah. they were experienced actors. So Asha Davis, she yeah. was the lead of, okay. of Unwritten Rules. And Asha at that time mm. had just done Pariah, which My was a goodness. movie. And literally when I was writing it, mm. I just had Asha in mind. Yeah. And I didn't know Asha. I had worked on a show with her, mm. but I had never really, like, we weren't friends, yeah. right? Mm. And so, literally, <laughs> I kind of stalked her on Facebook mm-hmm. and um, I was talking to her and she never responded. And then I, I went to a pariah screening mm. in LA and she just happened to be there. Sure. Do the QA. And so, Afterwards, I went up and I was like, hey, you know, and because we worked mm. on South of Nowhere. She was on South of Nowhere. But before that, like she had done Friday Night Lights, like she was a known actor, mm. you know. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I've been reaching out to you on Facebook. She was like, I'm not on Facebook. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and so she was like, well, why, why were you reaching out? And mm. I was like, oh, I have this, this web series that I want to do. And mm. I want you to... Mm. be the lead mm. and she was like okay let's sit down mm. let's let's you know and we met and she identified because her sister was always um would come home mm. and complain about being the only black in the person room. in mm. a workplace mm. so she was like yeah let's do it sure and she did like all season you know all mm. four seasons mm. and then the other actors i just auditioned Hmm. Um, and again, I you know I didn't have the money that I was unemployed at yeah, the time. Yeah. <laughs> like that, I couldn't pay. That's you know, amazing. but I was like, here's the script, hmm. and I think you know, and I I know that everyone did it because of the work, because yeah. they connected to With the, work. the hmm. material, hmm. and so yeah, we did um, we did four seasons. Hmm. No, yeah, three. No, we did. Th- three seasons and did it help to to get the book sold or it did well done. <laughs> so, well and done. It, it was funny because yeah. when we when we released the trailer mm. i remember like production companies like was, were calling me mm. wanting me to meet because they wanted to turn the show into a tv show mm. and um I, I remember the first meeting i took like they wanted to get rid of Asha. Like the show hadn't even been released. It was oh. just a trailer. But they were like, yeah, you know, we we will get an established actor like Gabrielle Union. Mm. And then they were like, yeah, and we're gonna bring in a white showrunner, you know, to to write it. Like they were they had a, this guy in mind. Okay. And I was like, no, thank you. Mm. And they were like, what do you mean? Like, mm. how can you turn down? And I was like, yeah, because that wasn't in like that's not why I did the show. I did the show to sell books. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. you know, and mm. and as the show became popular, I would get people approaching me wanting to do this and wanting to do the, do mm. that, and I was like, no, mm. you know, and 
no one understood like how are you turning down yeah. deals mm. you know mm. and i was like it's easy because i wasn't doing the show for these deals mm. so i was like when it's right i know it will be right you know mm. and and i released the show in 2012 <clears throat> i didn't get the deal from tv1 until 2018 my goodness but when they approached me mm. i was like oh this is right this is, right. this is right. This is right. And and from that, you know, the we did the show from 2012 to 2016. Mm. And uh, 2018 was when at the end of 2018. So so actually the deal happened in 2019 mm. and I went back and paid everyone who had even you know the oh. the guests i paid oh. everyone who had ever worked on the show that's a, that's a, you know? i mean that's a, that's amazing you know yeah. you, you don't usually get that uh, no. mostly producers run away with the money well <laughs> people, there were a lot of people that were surprised when they yeah, got the check they yeah. were like Whoa. But I was like, no, yeah. I couldn't have done this. Mm. And but we can, were all doing it. It sounds like you, you're not motivated by money no. in your process. How does that work? Because, you know, we've got some very money-hungry producers out there and which have given the industry a very mm. a, a bad rep. For me, mm. to, to be a creative, I, I, I just feel like you can't do this <laughs> if money is important That's you know true. you know what i yeah. mean because you first of all to do it is hard mm. right mm. and because it's hard you have to have a passion yeah. to to be you know to sustain yeah. you know a career in mm. it because it's not yeah. you know mm. and and i think too because when I was working in production, oh. I had made money. Yeah. So I knew like um, what it was like to live comfortably. Yeah. And I realized like after I got laid off, you know, you, you're at home and you're doing mm. like some soul searching, mm. you know. And I remember one day I, I went to my closet and I had all these clothes with tags still on mm. them, you know. And I was like, none of this Matters. makes me happy. So true. You know, like, I, this isn't, mm. like, what? So meaning what, with tax, you, you hadn't worn them yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sure. like, I had all of this stuff. Mm. And I was like, but this isn't, because, again, going back to my grandmother, like, what, what life do I want to live? That's you know so what true. I mean? Because mm. I'm only here for a certain a amount of time, yeah, right? True. And so, so yeah, so I, I've never been, you know, mm. really, when it comes to my creative, yeah. you know, process. Now, if I am working as a worker, yeah. you know, you then yes, get paid I want to get paid. Yeah. But I realize that my, mm. you know, mm. I can't, mm. like, even when I write projects, I can't write it, write them with the you know, like, I'm going to get paid. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's not going to... Resonate. Yeah, and be yeah. authentic, yeah, right? That's true. And so, like, getting paid is a bonus. Okay. But the idea to have your work mm. out mm. and for someone to, like, yeah. hear your voice... That's true. That's priceless. Like, that's... That's for me is the only thing that. But I'm sure many people will be saying, "Well, she's from America. She's probably ca coming from a, a, a good family, no. and she has a good financial no. background." <laughs> no, 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 no. How were you guys growing up? And you know, uh, no, I I yeah. was in the ghetto. Of, yeah. You know, I I lived in the hood. You know, um, and that's and that's why I don't take anything for granted mm. because. I wasn't supposed to be where I'm at yeah. right now, you know, according to, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, and throughout my career, I've had money. I haven't had money, even as a grown mm. adult, you know? Mm. So it's like, I know what it's like to mm. have money yeah. and I know what it's like to not, not to have. have money. And at the end of the day, it do, money doesn't define like yeah. I am the same person yeah. regardless. Right. You know, I can put out the same creative yeah. you know, work regardless. Mm. You know what I mean? So 
So yeah, and, and you know, I we were talking, and I'm I'm of the mindset. Um, I'm very patient mm. when it comes to my work. Yeah, you know, um, and so I'm I'm of the mindset of what's for me is for me, mm-hmm. and no one can take that away. Yeah. So if it's for me now, yeah. that's great. If it's for me five years from now, that's, that's right. great. So, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know, I I I, and I when I left in two thousand two thousand fifteen because I was still working in production mm. doing the web series. Yeah. And at one point, I was like. I, it was too much. It was actually making me sick because I was literally working in production, shooting on the weekends, oh. after work, going to edit these oh. web series. Oh. I was working like every day. And um, I was like, finally, okay, I have to pick. Mm. I have to pick one. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to choose me. I'm going to choose Ink Spot, right? Mm. And I was like, okay. If I am intentional, if I put in 110% every yeah. day, mm. I know that I'm going to be okay. Because I'm putting in the time everything mm. of myself. Mm. So I'm going to step out mm. on faith, yeah. and it's going to happen. Mm. And literally, when I stepped out, I was like, I'm not gonna look at my bank account because yeah. I know, because I know that I'm gonna be taken care of mm. because I'm putting in the work. That's it. You know, mm. and it was times where, like, I would, you know, pay rent, and then I would look at my account and say, Oh, that's a little low. <laughs> but I, I, it, but then I was still shooting. Mm. I was like, Oh, it's a little low. Yeah. And then, you know, someone would call me. And it's something for a job, That's you know, it. like, yeah. for, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. And and the the thing is, jumping to Africa, yeah. So in 2007, 2017, mm. I came, um, I came to Africa because mm. I I wanted because I had, I I love to travel, yeah. And I had bought a big group to South Africa. Mm. And I had decided, I was like, you know, because I had come to Africa in 2008 after, again, a, a, a moment in my life. My mother had passed in 2007. Condolences. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it was that aha moment, like, okay, I'm really not here forever. Like, I, I need yeah. to do the things that I want to do, want to do. And mm. coming to Africa was always yeah. on my list. So I was like, I'm going to Africa. Mm. Um, and so I come to, to Africa and I, I, and I just over the years, like that trip, when I got to Johannesburg, Johannesburg was the last place. Mm. Cause I had gone to Senegal, Ghana, Cape Town and Johannesburg. And I got to Johannesburg and I was like, oh, I can live here. Mm. You know, I just something I could live here. So I was like, yeah, one day I'm mm. going to move to so I'm going to move to Johannesburg. Mm. So when I bought the group in 2017, um, I because, you know, as Americans, we're always want to bring stuff yeah. to Africa, okay. whether it's school supplies, okay. clothes, okay. just okay. stuff. Right. What, 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 where does that come from? <laughs> I, like, I don't know, because, this, you know, watching mm. watching the the narrative in the media, mm. you know, Africans need stuff. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? I Africans don't have, okay. you know. Okay. And so I did not want to be that American bringing stuff. Okay. So I was like, well, what can I bring? Mm. And so I decided to bring my knowledge of the industry. Wonderful. So I was like, okay, because, you know, at that point, I had done YouTube mm. and, uh, you know, a, a group of us was doing YouTube and, and we were finally seeing yeah. it, you know, mm. the benefits, mm. like mm. people were getting jobs, yeah. people were, you know what I mm. mean? And so I was like, oh, well, let me do workshops mm. to teach Africans how to do what I did on yeah. YouTube. Like create my own product, mm. you know, my own project, mm. 
and teach them the distribution, that's teach it. them, you mm. know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, mm. you know? And one of the actors on my web series, I was like, yeah, you want to come with me to Africa? Because mm. you could teach acting and yeah. I could teach, you know? She was like, sure. Mm. And the funny thing is we, bo both of us, we had decided to come and we were doing Botswana, mm. um, Wanda, mm. and Kenya. Mm. And we were both not working. Mm. <laughs> and mm. so when I asked her, she was like, well, how are we going to do this? Mm. And I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, we'll figure, we'll figure it, it we'll out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I was like, we, uh, because mm. we have the intention. Yeah, All we have to do it. is like have the intention, mm, you know? Mm. And literally, my house flooded. Oh, my goodness. And I was in a hotel for mm. two months. Mm. And when I was in the hotel for two months, mm. I got, like, the rewards, you know? Okay. So I had all of these points. Mm. <laughs> mm. But I, I just need, I, I, for, for the sake of our viewers, mm -hmm. how, how does this reward system work? So, you know, you stay in a hotel yeah. and you get rewards and that rewards turn into money. Okay. Okay. And so that's, so I was like, oh, well, we have, mm. we have a place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we just have to figure out the ticket. My goodness. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, sh yeah, then I had points from my credit card. Mm. And so I was like, oh, well, we, you know, <laughs> we have it. Yeah. And it, the, it, in each place, they were like, well, how much are you charging? Mm. And I'm like, I'm not charging anything. Mm. This is, you know, like, because I got, I have the, I have mm. the resource to get there. Mm. And so, yeah, we did it. Completely free. Completely free. My goodness. And, but from there, mm. once I did that, then the next year, someone was looking at my CV. Yeah. And they were like, "You wait, what did you do? You, mm. you went to Africa and yeah. did workshops? Mm. And they hired me on the spot My to, like, goodness. consult. That's amazing. You know, and yeah. I was coming here. So it was like, oh, so that's how I'm going to yeah. come here, yeah. you know? Mm. So, yeah, I just, that's when you're not driven by mm, money. money. Mm. Like, Mm. doors open yeah you know yeah. so i was able you know to come mm. here yeah 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 it's it's amazing um you know just what you're saying about you know not being driven by by money mm. um i think most people in the society that we're living in we we forced by situations and circumstances outside of us rent children food and it's hard it's very difficult yeah. you know so yeah. i really commend you for that yeah. but what was your what was the actual reason you know um, we were talking earlier about the will smith moment when he was shooting uh, ali Mm -hmm. And he said first time he landed on Africa, he, he'd never seen so many black people in a space. And that was uh, a big moment for him, uh, mm -hmm. freedom of euphoria and, uh, you know, f but for you, I mean, you grew up in Texas. I grew up in Texas. So there were a lot of black people around you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'd seen, you know, uh, you, you had experienced that, not being the only black. What was the reason why you decided to come, to come home? Well, because I, I grew up in Texas being yeah. surrounded by nothing but black people. So I knew how that felt. Yeah. Then I went to Hollywood and was on the only white, white I'm the only black person, black person sure. you know, in mm. this white world. So I knew how that felt. Yeah. So when I got to Africa, mm. it brought me back to my childhood, you know. And so I was like, oh, I like how this feels. Mm. And mm. this is what, you know, mm. like... I want this over Hollywood, mm. you know, like, mm. because I like the way it feels, Yeah, you know? Yeah. But I mean, when you look at the industry and the level that it's at here, especially in South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, because in, if you compare South Africa to other countries on the continent, we're a bit further. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll use South Africa as a perfect example of where Africa is. Mm -hmm. um, comparison between, you know, Hollywood 
and the industry here, how how far off do you think we are, and what are the the biggest impediments and challenges that you that you think we still need to overcome here in the space? I think that um, people here, because you have the stories, yeah. right? You have you have the voice. Mm. Um, but I think, well, there's two things. Mm. I think that mm. there's there needs to be a little bit, and I and I. I and I say this because I, I think it's a, a similar problem that in the States for yeah. minorities in the States, mm. right? Where you don't have access, mm. you know what I mean, yeah. to certain things. Yeah. So you don't know necessarily, like you guys just skip the development process That's so true. altogether. Yeah. Development is very important, very important. to yeah. It's create. the foundation of yeah. your house. Yeah. yeah. And so then when you have a script and you're like, no, it doesn't need development. Every thing needs to every yeah. script needs a development yeah. process right mm. and so i think that in as far as story there has to be this development process added yeah. Yeah. to actually flesh out ideas mm. and develop complex characters that's true. you know what i mean because i think that that's what's missing mm. as far as story wise yeah. i also think in the mindset of, I think creatives here think that they need someone to tell their story, mm. and you don't need you don't need a studio, you don't need government funding, mm. you don't need you know what I mean. But I think creatives here are always looking mm. because when you, you know, even like the Netflix coming here. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like you don't need Netflix. That's true. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, because these these machines, they exploit creatives, yeah. number one. They take creatives IP, mm. you know, and it's like you can you can do it yourself. You know, like Matthew Cherry back in a, like a couple of years ago, he shot an entire feature with two iPhone 6. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. two cell phones. Mm. Mm. And then once he shot it, then Apple was like, wait, you did what? Yeah. And then he blew up. That's true. And then, you know, mm. a couple of years later, he won an Oscar. Yeah. Now he's directing TV mm. just from shooting... On from, two iPhones. Just starting. <laughs> he just started. He just yeah. started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that, so I think creatives on the continent, not just here, you have to get out of the mindset that you need someone yeah. to do it. Whether yeah. it's, you know, a, an American producer or a government, government funding, yeah. you know, yeah. just, you just do it. Mm, mm. Because then once you do it, then people, you have leverage. They come to you. Because they come to you. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. for all, all of my series, mm. I didn't pitch anything. At all. No, they found me on YouTube. Mm. You know? Mm. And so it's, it's like when you have something, you put it out there, mm. and it's good. Yeah. People will come to you. Naturally. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to. Like, I, I've never pitched anything. I... Till this day, I've never pitched My goodness. anything. You know, like yeah. people usually just, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing, Kim. Yeah. It really is. And especially in this landscape, I mean, you know, you and I were both at uh, the Durban Film Mart mm -hmm. uh, this past week. And I mean, we learned a lot, met a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that surprised me was the panel discussions where you'd have the streamers there. And those were the... Well, those are the sessions that were the most full. Everyone, everyone is, packed. everyone yeah. wants an opportunity. They say, give me anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And funny, those are the sessions I didn't go to because of just that energy, you know, um, where we, we're begging these people literally, uh, uh, kissing their feet with all due respect. Uh, and uh, they're saying, well, speak to the distributors. We don't have time for you. 
you know yeah. um and yeah. and and that was that, uh, that was basically what i got from most of my colleagues who i'd had conversations with to say well it was quite disheartening no it was yeah. it was like because i went because i just wanted to know yeah. you know yeah. be educated yeah. but yeah i was like they weren't even there you yeah. know like it, it yeah. was like they sent one person yeah um but i also think that what creatives on the continent they you guys don't realize that mm. Africa's hot right now. It is. That's you know true. what I mean? Yeah. And America mm, mm, it's wants, yeah. you know, yeah. like after Black Panther, yeah. like America wants African yeah, content. Mm. And so it's like, because you're in a demand, you don't have, like I said, all you have to do is create mm. and it will, they will it, come to yeah. you. We should get out of that mentality. Um, that we need someone else to tell them. Well, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll definitely take that for my personal journey. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, to many people, when someone sees you and they look at your resume, they see the people you've worked with, the projects, they would say, Kim, Kim has made it, you know? Mm -hmm. How would you define making it in life? I think I've made it, oh. you know? Um, because you know I always tell people you have to find define success yeah. for you yeah um I think and and people um mm. friends and even my family when yeah. I sold the shows to um TV one mm. they were like you're at like wait and you're leaving <laughs> you know what i mean like you're at like yeah. this is your time yeah. like how can you leave yeah. when you're like just you mm. just sold these you're two shows begun. and i was like yeah but for me mm. it was that was success i made yeah. it like yeah. i i wasn't planning to sell yeah. the shows but mm. i did it mm. so i don't really i can leave yeah. you know what i mean i can i can step out because yeah. i sell the shows mm. you know mm. um if i sell more shows great. great but i made it once i had my like when i looked at um Everything I did, because they, they played everything I did wrong first, mm. premiered. And when I was at home and I watched it on TV mm. for, you know what I mean? Yeah. And as that little girl, mm. I was like, but then I have made it in so many, because even with the book, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Mm. I Check that out. Boom. When I did my play, mm. that opening night, I was like, oh. Check. Mm. I can move. You know what I mean? That's it. So I, for me, yeah, I, I've made it. Oh, man, I love that. You know? I love that. What do you think is the overall mission of filmmakers in this current generation? You know, what do you think, you know, as you're saying, um, Africa right now is hot. The Americans want to come here. Where do you think the trend is going? And, um, you know, given your understanding of your personal purpose, how is Kim Williams playing a part in the bigger mission or direction in which we are taking? Well, I hope. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this trend, <laughs> this yeah. Like, I hope that um, creatives here mm. realize the power of their authentic voice. Yeah. Um, I think being here, I, I, I see creatives and they're always trying to tell the African version of, of America, of this, of that. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, but your authentic mm. voice with your own stories, yeah. that's enough. Yeah. So I hope that with the younger generation, cause they're, they're bold, you know, mm. like they don't care, you yeah. know, like, yeah. so I hope that they, that their confidence, mm. like lead them to tell their own stories mm. without trying to be the African version of, of mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's what my hope is. That's amazing. And, and I think with me being here, like mm. my purpose of being on the continent is not to tell your stories um, 
but help like just amplify and nurture and develop the African voice. Amazing. And now I have been like I've been here for four years mm. and for the first four years and for the like when I came over here, I was like, ah, I don't mm. want to tell any African stories. I, mm. I don't want to do that. Um, but me as a writer, me as a creative, mm. I can't help it. Yeah. But what I am doing, you know, like I have some ideas, mm. but I'm always collaborating with a local yeah. and saying, okay, let's create this together. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. I don't want to do it by myself. I because see. for me, it's like, I, you know... I don't want to colonize yeah, African yeah. stories yeah. as an American, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so yeah. the projects that I am working on, I'm partnering, I'm collaborating with a local mm. person. Okay. You know? I mean, how long do you think you'll be here for? Living in South Africa, in Africa, do you think it's a choice that you want to make for the rest of your life? I, I think so. Yeah. Like, I have no desire to go back yeah. to the U.S. I honestly would, I mean, Africa looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, I may not be here in Johannesburg. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. I, I, I feel like I will be on the continent That's for it. a while. Yeah. And this, yeah. Is, this is where the biggest, you know, potential lies, mm -hmm. you know, for the future. So I respect you for that. Yeah. So now it's game time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna play some uh, games. This is the, these are called rapid fire questions, just okay. quick questions. Okay. And we just want to test your knowledge. Uh, mostly, uh, I mean, it's all about uh, film. So yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you should be okay with that. Uh, well versed. Well, I'm a TV person oh. mostly. But okay, but okay. Let me be film. Okay. Well, let's see what's good. Let's okay. let's see. Uh, first question: Which South African film? <laughs> Ging, ging, ging. <laughs> tee, tee, tee. <laughs> Where's an African film won an Oscar in 2006? That's the only South African film that has ever won an Oscar. You should know this, Kim. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait. Uh, to, no, Almost there. Uh, no, 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 no. To no. see Rome. No, no, no. no. The, the, the one about the... the uh, to, to, to. Um, it's very African close. I very saw it. Yeah. I saw it. <laughs> it has it is two tits. Two, 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 no, two, uh, uh, <laughs> I remember seeing it. Uh, okay, what's the title? Well done. No, I mean, you tried. Tootsie. Tootsie. Okay, yeah. okay. I knew it was There's, something. Yeah, I knew it was something. Yeah. Okay. Which USA actor broke his ankle during a, a jumping scene? He was jumping a building uh, in a well known franchise. And bonus if you know if you name the franchise. So he was that he was, was shot here. No, it was it's in the states. He's but he's a South African. Actor. He's an American actor. Oh, it's not South no. Africa. Oh, oh. Bang, bang, Mission, bang, in, bing, Mission bang, Impossible. Bang, yeah. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Well done. <laughs> okay, so here's one I'm I'm expecting you to 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 know. Um, what's the latest saucy South African show? on Netflix right now. Oh, the Fatal... What? Is it Fatal... Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's not Fatal Attraction. Yeah, no. No, Fatal... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. With the, the, the seduction. woman... Fatal Seduction. The woman the well with that. the young guy. Okay, okay cool. Um, which South African-American actor said there, there are only 33 people who speak Afrikaans in South Africa? I mean, it's, it was a well. It was popular this side. She she had Charlize a, Theron. That's the one. Yeah, yeah she had a podcast <laughs> yeah, interview, yeah. and we don't know why she made those comments. I knew that. Yeah, it was like some. Yeah, yeah just yeah. shade, throwing uh -huh. shade at your own people. But anyway, mm -hmm. what popular site logs everyone's film diaries? Okay, ID, we, IMDb. Well, Letterbox. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. This is called the Desert Island. Okay. okay. Now, if you were stuck on a desert island, what is the one film that you'd take with you? So my favorite film of all times, mm -hmm. Terms of Endearment. Hey, beautiful. That's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful film. Yeah. Man. Beautiful. Okay. And if you were the Minister of Sports, Arts, and Culture for a day mm -hmm. in South Africa, what is the one 
big change that you would make? Oh, well, for the day? Well, for the day, well, this, we'll give you a term. Oh, because <laughs> I was like, it's going to take more than a day. Yeah. Um, um, I would develop a program where young creatives and, not, and young creatives, like yeah. high school, you know, like maybe 12 yeah. to 18 yeah. can learn filmmaking because that's where that's you start. That's it. Well, Kim, thank you very much for a wonderful interview. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, it was a great pleasure. <laughs> um, you know, you you really are a a a, a radiant uh, you Aww. know person and a woman of in, in my in, in in our culture would say umbo goto. You know, you are a real rock of our society. Oh, thank and you. And that's testament to the work you've done on the ground, training uh, young African children with 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 absolutely, you know, no, having nothing to ask in terms of re remuneration. That is a, that shows the kind of person that you are. Thanks. So as an African woman in your home continent, I want to say we salute you and we celebrate you and Happy Women's Month. Oh, thank you. Thank Thanks you so for much. having me. Thank you so much. I uh, would also like to thank the Dynamic Workspace, uh, the Magic Light Box, and also Fortune Well for making this podcast possible. Thank you so much.